Good morning, everyone. It's a cloudy kind of morning here in Garoka, Papua New Guinea. My name is Ryan, heading out on a 15 minute flight out to Ibai today to drop off four drums of fuel, like 185 kgs a piece. So, sitting a little low in the back, but we're still within the envelope. Well, there you go. We haven't quite got it all strapped down. We've got two drums up here strapped, two drums here strapped, and then we're gonna have a net that comes all the way over and tie it down all the way around just for safety. Because this track right here can only hold 100 pounds. It's only rated for 100 pounds for each one. So regardless if it's a big strap, the weak part's right there. So the first two things I'm gonna to do to figure out if I'm overweight or underweight or whatever else with NCG is I know how much fuel I have. I've got 550 pounds of fuel. My payload's 750 kgs, 52 kgs. We've got four seats off, which I put down in the pods down earlier. And it comes out to where I could put on another 231 kgs of cargo if I wanted to, which would probably have to go in the pods because it'd throw me too far out of my CG. So looking at that real quick, you can see I'm kind of towards the end of the envelope, but not on the envelope. I'm fine flying all the way like right on the envelope because it actually makes actually flying to these bush locations easier. Um, easier to like rotate out of them. It's easier to get the weight off the nose wheel. It's easier to rotate onto a slope airstrip like Ibai, which is up to 11% slope. So it just makes my life easier. Anyway, I'm still within, so I'm gonna finish up my walk around, wait for the weather to clear out there, and get out of here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is check to see if all my VGs on top of the wing are there. I'm only allowed to be missing one. So look at that first and then walk around. Got an update on weather, still have fog in there. Honestly, we'll probably have fog until, I don't know, probably like 9.30 or so, maybe 10. And then about that point, that's when the winds pick up, just make it more difficult. So yeah, Ibai is probably the most difficult place that I fly to, at least here in PNG. So I'm also just looking to make sure all my VGs are all right here. None of them been knocked off with a stone or something like that. And just basically check in the overall condition of the plane. Life of a bush pilot in Papua New Guinea. Waiting on weather. All right, well, two hours have passed. It's finally clearing up out there. I still have to go the long way just because there's a bunch of clouds on all these ridges right here. But let's go ahead and get started and uh, get going. It's about a 15, well, maybe 20 minute flight now. DC clearance into control space on track Gorko. Alright, just watching NG coming up over 33-4%. Looking at ITT now. And it peaks out. Uh, one zero, one Alright, there we go, end of the start. One five, Alpha November, you know what I'm So the area that's directly around Ibai is yeah, it's still pretty good. Um, the approach is good, so that's what I'm gonna go off of. So, like I said, there's a bunch of clouds here that go up to 10,000 feet. It's just a 15 minute flight, so I think I'm just gonna go the long route to get out there. Might be able to squeeze maybe through those little gaps up there, but 
Probably just easier to just go the longer route. All right, our weight with all this fuel is 1,550 pounds. 570 pounds of fuel on board. Our fuel caps are good. Our selectors are good. Our controls are good. We'll turn TAWs off because we're going to need it right off the bat as we're going the low route through the valleys. Our um, flight plan in here. Our trims are set up. We'll do a port in just a second. Broken Tower, good morning. November Tango Kilo. Request taxi I buy 1 POB. We're taking the kilo work out, taxi 17 left, turn to back track, line up 1020. 1020, clear to back track and line up 17 left, November, Tango Kilo. We'll throw our lights on as we get onto the runway. They're right and left. And our governor check also. All right, that checks out. We'll be 50 knots by that taxiway or else we'll just stop on the runway, full reverse, heavy braking, going off for any reason, cut off, pull off and shut off. After takeoff, we'll pitch for 85 knots, consider EPL, consider feather. Otherwise, cut up, pull off and shut off. 85 then 80 full flaps, emergency's masters, crack my door and call the tower. Igniter's on, lights already on. Inlet is in bypass. For 67.50 for takeoff, so 61 and 72. We'll rotate at 61. I'm gonna be going into I-Buy, so in case I forget, I'm just gonna go ahead and add three knots because it's a sloped airstrip. We'll go about that. We'll talk about that in a minute, but. Um, Add three knots to this, so it's going to be 75 knots for landing. Broken Tower, November Tango, Kilo, ready for departure. November Tango, Kilo, 17 left, right, turn clear to take off. 17 left, right, turn clear for takeoff, and I will be heading out ESRO south today. Can solve previous runway heading, clear to take off. Runway heading, clear for takeoff, November Tango, Kilo. Ignition condition, flaps 20, fuel and harnesses. Checklist is complete. Rotate 61, we're 25 out right now, so degrees, so 1330. All right, torque is set, airspeed is alive. There's rotate. I can smell all the coffee roasters right now. And it doesn't smell very good. Roasting coffee doesn't. Boosted coffee smells good, but it just smells like burnt coffee. All right, well, we're over 300. Let's go 10 degrees of flaps. We'll go zero and bring our prop on back to 2,000 RPM and get it trimmed out. We're only going to go up to around 6,000 feet probably, probably even initially 5,500 feet to get around through this lower gap down here. It should be open by the time I get down there though, so not really worried about that. Broke Tower, November Tango Kilo departed 3-7. We'll be tracking up to 10 miles left of track 240. Not above 8,000. Estimating I by 5.5. Tango Kilo Cody, 8,000. The South South contact must be 120 decimal 1, no contact 6598. 120 decimal 1, 6598, South South, no Bremerton Kilo. Let's just go ahead and pull our power back on down to 1250 for the time being. 0205. And clean up landing light, bypass, and igniters off. Oh, I buy. It's an 11% sloped runway, and then the touchdown I think is considered 9%. Bravo, wind ready. One seven left, right turn. Clear to take off. Wind ready. Clear for takeoff. Right turn out. Uh, one seven eight. Oh, hotel, Bravo. 
So that's why I added those extra knots into my approach speed because basically I have to have enough energy left over for me to be able to match the slope and flare at the same time. So if I were just to come in at my VREF, which is just 1.3 VSO for this specific weight, and I would basically start my flare and I would just basically pancake into the ground and it makes a really hard landing. And then you bounce and then you can potentially damage things. As we come around this corner here, it's just going to open up into a, a fairly skinny valley, um, depending on how the clouds are looking. Hopefully I don't have to turn right back around and go above it all, but we'll see in the next minute. Morrisby 6598, November Tango Kilo Transfer. November Tango Kilo, this must be good. November Tango Kilo, no joy, one two zero decimal one. Asaro South this time below 8,000, estimating I by 5.5, five, and we'll be tracking up to one zero miles left of track. November Tango Kilo, traffic following Papa Hotel Bravo. 500. Five hundred. Protection Goroka for Moro, 8,000 and departure. Copy traffic, November Tango Kilo. Number Tango Kilo, Eric Units 1008. 1008. All right, set up standby as well. This is the Asaro South Gap. And yeah, just one of my favorite gaps, by, like, or valleys, I should say, of all times. It's just so pretty down low. There's some cliffs and stuff up here. I mean, there's cliffs here and there's waterfalls. Like there's a waterfall right over there. Just absolutely beautiful. There's another one right down there. Like there's just so many of them. So I might just pull my power about three knots of tailwind. So it should be nice and smooth down here. See, there's just a, bun, a bunch of burn marks. So people just burn off all the grass. I think there's a waterfall down there. One right below me. Now this is, this right here is why I love this valley. This, this little corner right here is so sharp, but these cliffs right here are absolutely gorgeous. 500. So Mount Iombari is right underneath all these clouds, so I basically have to go in a straight line to where I want to if I wanted to go in a straight line. But I'm basically just going to follow this valley down. I'm actually recording this screenshot right here for you guys. If you guys are a flight simmer and you want to fly the same flight that I'm doing today, I'll leave those links on my Patreon page. I think there's a really huge, yeah, there's a waterfall coming out here that this time of year actually has a pretty decent amount of water coming over it. I've shown you guys before, but it's usually like trickling, but today it has a pretty decent amount and it kind of just goes down through a couple areas. So anyway, I'm just gonna basically take this low route all the way down out to Ibai. So I kind of come around this corner and then go over there, but I'm just gonna hop over the top of this mountain and then it should clear up enough on the other side. Eh, it looks like, looks like that should probably work. If you'd like to get into flight simming and you don't know how to fly or you don't know how to fly the Kodiak and you want to fly it specifically, I've got a course that actually walks you through all of my procedures, what I do, how I take off, how I land, how I set up crews, how I, just, how I set up the G1000 for instrument and VFR flying. And if you're interested, it, I think it'd be a great first, first. stepping stone for anybody or if you've already flown other things, it'd also be able to just hone in your skills specifically for the Kodiak. Um, uh, let's go around this last hill so I can bring open my strip chart real quick. We're looking at here. There you go, gives myself a little more time. Okay, runway 23. I'm just going to set up my OBS now. Runway 230. Puts a nice line on my screen so I know the orientation if, if there's a bunch of clouds in the circuit. 454 meters, 11% slope. Touchdown zones, 9% slope. Elevation of the field 6340, or sorry, touchdown zone 6340. So let's go 7300 for pattern altitude. I'm also going to go ahead and come down here to bay minimums and put 6840. 6840 is just like an instrument approach. Minimums. Minimums. I will say that right there. Papa Hotel Bravo, this mostly good morning, good. 
That way I don't drop below my turning final, basically. So by setting up my minimum, 6840, that's my turning final, so I won't go too low on turning final. Because it's just an open valley out here, it's like the tendency for myself is just to get low turning final because there's because there's just nothing out here to go off of reference on like I want to be at this height right over these trees or something like that. All stations I buy one zero decimal one November Tango Kilo one zero miles to the east five thousand five hundred will be circuit time I buy five two. All right, so let's go ahead and climb on up to 7,300, because, well, we need to. Be sure to stay to the end of the video. I'm going to be, um, I don't have my drone with me today, but I have some drone footage. If you'd like to see kind of the surrounding areas out here, I buy, I'll be showing some drone footage after my landing. All right, that's the ridge that I need to go. That's the hill where I turn final. So it looks like I might have to do a little bit of an abbreviated circuit, potentially. It looks more like 6,500 feet. It's about the maximum I'm going to be able to get to, at least right here. We've got five miles, so it should be right around the corner of this. That hill out there, I believe, is where I turn my final, or is it this one here? I can't remember. All right, that's the field. I'm 300 feet below my turning final, but I might be able to come out here higher and then come in. Let's just go ahead and put our prop forward. Degrees of flaps. All right, so that's more of the hill I think I turned final because I'm pretty far out. It looks like I might have to come in at an angle too. As straight in is not going to work. Oh, no, there's 6840. There we go. Should work just actually pretty good. Let me do a full circuit so I can take a look at the winds and stuff. Looks like five knots of headwind. That's not that great because that means five knots on tailwind. On takeoff. Going 75, 85, 95. I got 95 just about now. Z556, uh, copy Rob Schnummel, say again, uh, next Rob Schnummel then. Rob Schnummel, that's your third one, five, I'll see 556. Morsby 659 or 8, November Tango, Kilo in the circuit, I buy, report after landing. Uh, November Tango, Kilo. All stations, I buy, 1201, November Tango, Kilo in the circuit, I buy. Alright, well, let's just go ahead and fly on the other side of this. Winds look like they're calm just going to be 500 feet above the field the whole way it looks like looks pretty rough around that brown patch it's about the area that's about the area that i'd like to touch down in we'll just extend our whole circuit a little bit bigger for today i want to go into these clouds right here selectors, brakes, our VREF is already set up, our lights and inlet are done, power up 20 degrees of flaps, pitch for 12 degrees and right, or correction, left hand turn out if we need to go around, up and harness is not done but we'll get it in a minute. Uh, I think I'm going to have to drop back down, uh, nope. We'll just go around this last cloud. And then climb on back up to our 500 foot. Looks like we got another airplane just right over there. Looks like they're going a different direction though. All right, there's our pattern altitude, at least 500 feet above the field for turning final. We'll go around this cloud here. that flaps to go prop and harness is done All right I got my 85 knots of five knots potentially headwind a little bit farther out than I really kind of want to be
Go full flaps, checklist is complete. Our go around looks good if we need to. We're gonna match the slope before we pull the power. Three knots ahead when four knots crosswind. We're fifty on the descent. A little bit fast. Edwin. 75, 600 on the descent. Three knots. We're continuing. Six fifty on the descent. All right, we're committed. Five hundred. caught in something. It looks sloppy out here. I think I'm going to pull into the parking bay today. Got mud all over my windshield again. Awesome. All right. There we go. <laughs> Put my emergency brake on real quick. Breathe. Anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Give that video a thumbs up if you thought that was exciting. I always do. Catch my breath here for a second before I unload all these drums of fuel. Pick up some people, head back to Garoka, exact same way we just got in here. So, hey, be sure to consider subscribing if you aren't a subscriber already. I'll see you guys next time. All right, see if you can get it to the smack there. Again. <laughs>